I focus? Oh, I hope so. Good morning, everyone. It is about to be Christmas sewing 2023. Christmas sewing season is about to commence. I am so excited about it. I've got coffee and chocolate, and I'm not sure what better way to start to start the season. I mean, tis the season. I've got Josh Grove and queued up. Can't play that yet because, you know, copyright. That's all good. So I'm just gonna get into it. We've got three dresses. We have like a really sophisticated color palette this year. And I'm just, I'm just excited about it. Let's go. Before starting any new project, it is really nice to have a clean space. Sure, I try to clean up as I go, but sometimes that doesn't always happen. So yeah, before starting a project, I'll look around and if something's out of place, like out of their home, I take the time to put things away. It's something that I've doubled down on, clean space, clean mind. Let's start with Daisy's dress. Check out this wool. It's so delightful, kind of a light medium weight and has a lovely feel to it. I'm playing around with the idea of putting a cluster of beads in a diamond pattern on the bodice. So I'm trying to get a rough idea of how large the clusters will be and that way I can make up a pattern for the diamond spacing. I trace thread trace, I, th I thread trace around the bodice and then cut out the lining. fun is this pop of red. I'm thinking of taking some of that facing from the lining side and adding it to the bodice side. So things will kind of fold around and transition onto the inside of the lining. I just love that look. So I'm trying to figure out how to transfer the pattern onto the wool. Sure, I could get the wool wet but I didn't want to. I guess I just wanted to test the waters on a new method. So what does this new method look like? Well, first I cut across the first row of dots, pin that in place, and then put some thread down on the location of the dots. I guess I'm really feeling this whole thread, thread if, I can, if I can say it, this whole thread tracing marking thing. But after a few rounds of that, it's turning into a hot mess in a hurry. Just tails of threads everywhere. So what else can we try? Well, I'm wondering if I can make a makeshift embroidery setup thing. I don't know what the setup is called. I've just seen it in the videos from the famous couture houses. I know, I know. Maybe I can sneak in one day and be a fly on the wall. But in the meantime, I'm a mere mortal. And yeah, this isn't working out very well. So let's try another route. I'm thinking I can just place the beads where the dot is and that kind of works all right. But now I don't like how the clusters or beads are looking. It's definitely one of those situations where it went better in my mind. You know what I mean? It goes better in your mind than in reality. So I do a few of them just wondering if maybe I don't like the first one, but no. I just don't like how it's coming out. So I cut those off and I'm also thinking that there must be a better transfer method. Let's try some Taylor's chalk, right? This works okay-ish, but I'm still hoping for a better, a better method. So I take a strip of bias tape and transfer the spacing of the dots and then I pin that strip onto the fabric. Christmas, all the happy smiles and the wishes, and I want it all from the lights to the mistletoe. New plan with these beads. So I, <laughs> I was trying to do like a little cluster of beads, and I was trying to get a system together of how to get the clusters all together and like in a row and neat and clean and I don't think I have the setup quite yet for that so that's all right switching gears 
different sets of beads. They should be easier to put on. And then I've got this system where I've got, I've got it marked on this little, like, <laughs> it's a piece of hug snug bias band. And I had, hold on. I had, did I not have, did I take that off? There we go. Here's some gray. I'm going to put some beeswax on it um, and then iron the beeswax into the thread. It'll just make it more sturdy. And then my thought is I'm going to take these. These are Swarovski crystals. Aren't those pretty? And this is a, uh, it's like a darker shade. So it has some like black gray tones to it. I think it's going to be so pretty on this gray wool. And then I'm going to do the same spacing as with the clusters just these beads instead and it will be a lot easier these beads have a little cross on the back so you can put your needle you know one direction to secure it and then come back and put it the other direction to secure it so it's got a little right 90 degree thing so yeah let's get the first strand it's and and stuff like this is is good you know you get into a project you think it's going to go one way you start doing it it doesn't quite go the way doesn't quite go the way that you had it in your mind and that's fine you just switch switch to plan b sometimes switch to plan c d e f <laughs> you know we've got a bunch of letters in the alphabet and when you run out of letters you got numbers and you're not going to run out of numbers so you know there's always another thing you just switch gears and and figure it out i mean there's worse things in life than having to figure out what sort of sparkle to put on a christmas dress you, you know what i mean Somebody wants me. Tell me one thing. Is there anything that you're missing? I will keep you warm as soon as you remove that snow. Whatever we do, we will be all right. These holiday wonders will open your mind. May all your wishes tonight come true. Love I live, the dream I knew This Christmas I only wanna be close to you So I finished the front of this bodice. I'm outlining the back pieces now. And I'm looking at how many of these Rossi's I have left. I don't believe I have enough. So what I'm gonna do, here's the plan. I'm gonna start from going from the shoulders and work my way down. And I'm gonna kinda do these two pieces together. That way, I can see how many I have. I'm not gonna spend the time to count. Instead, I'm gonna just work my way down and see how many I have as I get to the bottom of this. If I get to the bottom and I have enough, then I'll just I'll just have enough, right? But if I don't get to the bottom, or sorry, as I approach the bottom and I don't have, it's obvious I don't have enough of them, I'm just gonna start like cascading them out. That way it just sort of like, you know what I'm saying? It just sort of like waterfalls, like just kind of like -na -na -na, goes down. The other thing that I'm thinking as I'm looking at, as I've, I've finished the front of this and I'm looking at it, it just looks like it needs a little bit something. I just have these things that have been just kind of placed on. So I think to tie it together with like the wool and just like have a little bit more texture and a little bit more just a cohesive of a, sorry, I've got coffee brewing in the background, um, but just have like a more cohesive like togetherness. Um, I'm going to do little tiny seed beads. Not little tiny, but just like seed beads, whatever, in between them. I think I'm going to do 
two in between each. I'm not really sure. I'm going to go through my stash and look for something on the darker side of life. I'm wanting something like a grayishy black, something of something of that sort. I think that'd be fun. So finally, I've arrived to a method that I like. I just took the paper pattern, sliced along the dots, and voila. It's an easy, accurate-ish way to place the beads, and it seems like such an easy, obvious solution. I mean, now it does. Feels kind of silly, all those other methods that I tried after having stumbled onto this one, but that's all right. With all the Swarovski crystals mounted onto the bodice pieces, and yes, I did luck out and I did have enough for the back pieces. I know it, gotta love it when a plan comes together, right? So I'm picking out what seed beads should go where, but like in between those crystals. The darkest color I had on hand were these silver ones, but I really don't like them. I actually like the cream color ones that I used to make those clusters earlier, like that I tried to use to make the clusters that I didn't like. I guess I actually did make the clusters, I just didn't like the clusters. Anywho, so I spaced them out and transfer that spacing onto my finger. I know it, it is a sophisticated operation over here. So I get a little setup together with the bee, like the bees, the beeswax for the thread, and I get to beading. Merry Christmas, baby. Rain is coming out to play. Santa Claus is packing the presents, making sure you've been behaving okay. With the bead placement complete, I'm switching gears to work on the skirt. I've got this idea brewing on placing a beaded bow on top of some pleats. So I cut the skirt to length and then used my pleater flipper tool to play around with this pleating idea. I'm thinking about one main inverted box pleat at the center front of the skirt and then some small pleats on each side. I get those pinned in place and then I've got fabric left over so I'm just cutting along. And then this extra fabric, if, if you will, this extra bit, this is now going to become the skirt back. And to find the center back easily, I just fold it over and now I've got my placket placed. Finally, I've put some pleats in and there you go, the back of the skirt is done. Kinda, it's kinda done because, I mean, I'm thinking some sparkle on the skirt would be fun. So yes, I start the process of this, you know, with this bow idea and then I keep going, making it up as I go along, just enjoying the process. Then you know it's Christmas when the snow starts to fall. Then you know it's Christmas for the children above all. Then you know it's Christmas cause Santa's on his way. We stand under the mistletoe and then Christmas Day, the joyful times we witness forever stays with us. Soon Rudolph fears his wisdom and gathers all his friends. When Santa and his missus wraps the final gift, you know it's time. Christmas for each and every Children of all, and 
then you know it's Christmas Cause Santa's on his way We'll stand under the mistletoe Then it's Christmas Now with the beadwork done on those bodice pieces as well as the skirt pieces, we can start to piece this dress together. I guess I'm feeling a little extra because I'm actually drafting up it together a pocket. I know it. Things are getting bougie over here. Truthfully, I've done so many pockets. I can do this without a pattern. I mean, I could just do it with my eyes closed, basically. But also, I mean, a pocket is a pretty simple shape, so that's not saying a whole bunch. I'm not at all trying to... It's not like I'm bragging about... It's not a huge accomplishment, okay? I, it's a pretty simple shape, you know? Before constructing the pockets, I get the placket out of the way. And y'all, I've got a stash of these organdy fat quarters in a variety of colors. I just love them. Don't you love that sound? I'm picking out this eggplant color in this situation, and I think it made a lovely placket. It's sturdy without adding any bulk, just tidied things up nice and quickly, right? Just in a nice little bundle. So now I attach the pockets, and I'm doing this using French seams. It's a new method for me. I guess I have been living under a rock, but yeah, you can attach inseam pockets to a dress with French seams. My life has been forever changed. With the skirt together, I'm looking at the bodice and I'm wondering if I should attach a collar. I'm thinking that something in a contrast would be fun. So I've got this super, super, super lightweight white fabric. It's obviously a contrasting color, but it's also in a contrasting texture and weight, so I'm thinking it might be fun. Since it's super lightweight and I am trying to up my ante lately, I am tracing the collar out onto some paper. My idea is that I'm going to pin this paper to the fabric and then stitch around hoping to gain some structure so the outline of the collar is in some flavor of accurate. You know what I'm trying to say? So I stitch the outline with two layers of the fabric together. That way I can simply turn the collar right sides out when it's all said and done. So moving back to the bodice, I can trim up my tracing lines and these thread marks are showing where the seam should be placed. So I'm trimming on the outsides of them as well as the seam allowance. So right sides together and a little bit of magic. Okay, maybe not, but here you go. The bodice is now together. Simple enough, right? Mm -hmm. 
I'm placing this collar number on the bodice, but I don't know, I'm just not liking it. So I'm setting that aside for another garment. Moving right along without the collar then, I'm attaching the lining to the bodice with right sides together. And to do this little tuck around the corner action, I'm going to first sew down the back sides of each of the pieces of the back bodice, right? Like the down the center back areas. From there, I can turn to the neckline so the garment's fabric tucks around to the lining side and then sew around the neckline. And finally, I do a bunch of clipping and understitching. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing all the plains, and the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strains. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Shepherds, why this jubilee? Why your joyous strains prolong? What the gladsome tidings be? Let's just by your happy song. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Gloria in excelsis Deo. So you know when you've got a material stash away for that perfect project? Well, I am trying to dig some up some black piping that I've had stashed away for a few years now because I'm thinking that this is the perfect project for that piping. After painting the piping to the waist seam, I base it in place and then I'm running it through my machine to, well, sew her down. <laughs> See him in the mangle, whom the choirs of angels praise. Mary Joseph, lend your aid. While our hearts in love we race Gloria In excelsis Deo Gloria In excelsis Deo
moving right along, doing a little quick cleanup, and now on to Audrey's dress. I'm taking some inspiration from a Gail Downs design from an old Stra- Australian smocking and embroidery magazine. She did this beautiful lace collar number, and I'm going to do something similar. So I grab a base bodice pattern, say that 10 times fast, base bodice pattern, my goodness. And this base pattern, it really doesn't matter what particular pattern it is, as long as you like the pattern. So basically, you don't need to have every bodice pattern under the sun, just one that you really like, right? At least that's, those are my two cents. Take them for what they are, for what they are worth the two cents that they are. Anywho, so I iron around my fabric and get to cutting out the dress pieces out of this gorgeous gray wool, as well as the lining bits out of this dark blue imperial batiste. The wonders of life got the prettiest side for everyone to enjoy. Standing up close by the Christmas tree, glimmering light, I am right where I want to be. I'll be home for a couple of days, wander around with you. You and me in the cold, thought it'd never be true. Wherever I go, I got you. Oh, I have stopped running. There is no way trying. You better loosen your belts. Drinking up wine by the fire. Don't care of anything else. It's Christmas. And some kind of love, my friend. I pray it will never end. You like to be here too It's Christmas and Outside snow's glistening It's just you and me tonight I'll spend all this Christmas with you Oh, it's such a charm Got you up in my arm There's nobody at the door You said, I wish this will never be over. Darling, it's time for your present. Come over here. Now it is time to get out in the snow. Lighting a light with you. Choirs will sing and the joy bells will ring. Nobody loves you as much as I do. It's a wonderful feeling from floor to the ceiling. It is that time of the year. Drinking hot wine by the fire Here on our own we got nothing to fear It's Christmas And some kind of love, my friend Pick up some candy canes And hang a wreath on your door It's Christmas And outside snow's glistening just you and me tonight It's just you and me tonight It's just you and me tonight I'll spend all this Christmas with you So after I put in those darts, now I'm going to play with the collar, like the lace collar bit. I've got an assortment of laces from Farmhouse Fabrics and I'm using the neckline as a base for the curves. Every Christmas, baby, rain is coming out to play. Santa Claus is packing the presents, making sure you've been behaving okay. Every Christmas, honey, yeah. the snowman's dusting off his hat. Putting on the show for everybody To give them a smile that lasts another year This 
something that happens with slate. There's a ring in the December is where the children are singing. Yeah. It's Merry Christmas, baby. Merry Christmas, baby. The snow is laid into feet deep. Now wish upon a falling star so all your secret dreams can come true. There's something that happens when sleigh bells are ringing in December. There's something that happens when something's that happens when December ends when December ends again. It's Merry Christmas, baby. Merry Christmas, baby. It's Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. It's Merry Christmas, baby. Yeah. I let the collar dry on what's become my trusty drying pillow. I know it. One day everything will be set up. One day, one day. It's all good. And I am so grateful for this space. It's allowed me to do so many wonderful things. And I gotta say, I am really pleased on how these collars are turning out. I took my time, I basted as many steps as I thought were able to be basted, and they are just laying really nice and flat. So now, how to attach them? Well, I'm looking at the photos from the magazine and it seems like they're just attached to the neckline, but I'm liking how the idea of introducing some entre-deux as like a transition piece. Maybe I'm about to get myself into a hot mess in a hurry, but I don't know. That's the route that I would like to take. So I base a piece of entredeau onto the neckline of the lace collar, and I also base the center back mark down the lining of the bodice. Now I can join the lace collar to the bodice using a zigzag. And finally, I'm going to take the whole shebang to my dress and attach that lace collar to the neckline. Voila, the bodice is complete. So now I'm moving on to those sleeves. Since this dress is going to be fully lined, I've got a set of sleeves out of the wool as well as out of the lining, right? Brilliant. Both out of the, out of the dress fabric and out of the lining fabric since it's fully lined. I know it's connecting all the brilliant dots over here. So I'm wondering if I can play around with the idea of putting a fancy vent type number. So I'm referencing one of Claire's books, the one and only Claire but I'm thinking that I should just keep it simple and, and not bite off more than I can chew. So I'm just putting in a little placket type of thing just for some fun visual interest. I might just get wild and crazy and add a button, y'all. <laughs> After cutting that placket open and turning things right sides out so everything can be pressed into position, then I'm putting each sleeve piece right sides together so I can sew up each sleeve separately. And this will 
allow the inside of the dress to be really pretty, you know? All the seams to, will be enclosed. Finally, I'm putting in some gathering rows in both the sleeve cap individually. So I'm adjusting those gathering stitches on the garment sleeve to fit the bodice and I sew the two together. But the lining sleeve, well I gather those up and I will be stitching the, that sleeve in place by hand. This is something that I learned from Claire's books a few years back when I made that Chanel coat, like that one, I, I tried to make it, I did it to my best of my ability at the time for Audrey and it's a technique that I have gone to several times since. It's a really wonderful card to play in oddball, oddball situations. It just keeps things looking nice and neat and, and don't worry, I will show that process soon. Before I can do that, I need to join the bodice lining to the party. So I sew the bodice to its lining around the neckline and then understitch. Always understitch. It's so powerful, makes such a big difference. I give the neckline a good pressing, but I'm not liking how it's sitting. So I'm hoping that adding some stitches will help things lay nice into place, like will help them lay nicely into place. So I'm trying to stitch from the lining side straight up to the entredeau and I'm hoping that doing this all the way around the neckline will solve the issue. And you can see halfway through, check out the difference, right? The more I lean into hand sewing, the more I enjoy it and I just, I really love the outcomes. Alrighty, so here we are sewing that lining sleeve to the lining of the bodice by hand. You see what I mean? It just opens the doors for so many solutions. So with all of these stitches into place, here's the bodice ready for the skirt. To do the skirt, I'm taking this gray wool fabric, lining it up to the best of my ability, and trimming the skirt to size. Audrey likes her skirts super long, so it's going to be a long skirt. She's been liking long skirts since forever, and that's fine. We all have our, our style, and it's also going to be one solid panel. No side seams, something that makes me so happy whenever I can eliminate seams. It's been a pathway to happiness for me for years. I know it, I am really fun at parties. <laughs> Anywho, I am running one set of gathering stitches all the way around this panel, so let the fun begin. What a feeling, now it's time for Christmas. And Christmas is my favorite time of year It's beginning to look like all my wishes Are coming true, that's why I cheer I've been busy decking the halls I've been kind to big and small And now it's time to have a merry holiday what a feeling when it's time for Christmas. Let's sing a carol and we'll bring it here. I guess that spring and summer, they're all fine. But I've been waiting for the season that's mine. So let it come. Yeah, let it come. Snowflakes fall, I can hear the sleigh bells call. They're saying it's time to have a merry holiday. What a feeling, now it's time for Christmas. And Christmas is my favorite time of year. It's beginning to look like all my wishes. 
are coming true. That's why I cheer. I've been busy decking the halls. I've been kind to big and small, and now it's time to have a merry holiday. What a feeling when it's time for Christmas. Let's sing a carol and we'll bring it here. Let's sing a carol and we'll bring it here. Let's sing a carol and we'll bring it. There's two pieces left for this dress. One is this little bit on the back of the dress. I'm making a belt loop and putting some Swarovski pearl beads. I know, bougie, right? Swarovski pearl beads. And my fancy method of measurement, pins. I'm marking where this bougie embellishment treatment is gonna go with pins. The second piece left is some pockets. I was looking at this skirt yesterday and I really love the whole lace collar number, but I think the skirt needed something going on, some interest. Alrighty, last but certainly not least, every sweet dress is coming from a Trudy Horn design combined with a wink and a nod pattern. Basically, I found this design in a Creative Needle magazine and I really loved the whole vibe of it, but the Creative Needle magazine is basically Pinterest before the internet. Let's face it, photos with broken links. That's kind of my way of saying they give you a magazine and there's no pattern. So I'm taking this wink and a nod pattern and I'm altering it a bit to create a similar shape. This is velveteen and to the best of my knowledge, this is the best way I have to iron it. Is the right side facing down and if there's a better method that's within my reach, I am all ears. So working from one side of the fabric, patting it to make sure the pattern pieces are oriented correctly, let the fun begin. There's nothing left 
the dress and its lining has been cut out. So now we can begin the fun of sewing it together. I'm actually going to begin with the lining, getting those panels together first. And to attach up that hem, well, I'm taking some organza and creating a little fabric hem number. I really like this treatment for curved hems. Hold up, I am on my way. I'm in motion. Let's go to the ocean. Yeah, let's go outside. We can hang out on the beach with our free. Isn't that amazing in Christmas times? We'll be chilling and having a good, good time. Doesn't matter if the snow is falling or the windows in the rain is falling. It will always be Christmas in the Santa's coming to visit No, he wouldn't miss this In Christmas times Oh, and the sun said it is just getting better On a blanket with the skyline painted in blue Ooh, yeah, that's what we do We'll be chilling and having a good, good time Y'all, this is such a big moment. I am changing my thread to match my fabric. It's amazing how not living under a baby and getting some flavor of regular sleep can have benefits of all sorts. So now that the dress as well as the lining are together, now comes the fun. How to attach the hem on the dress. But also, and this is really gonna be the interesting bit, how to go from the wink and a nod pattern to the Trudy Horn photo. They're pretty close, but not quite. Kind of like a little break in the bridge, and we're gonna have to do a little bit of a jump to get from one side to the other. For the hem, I'm attaching some entredeaux using two rows of stitches spaced about eighth of an inch apart. I'm press the seam towards the dress and then trim up the other side of the entredeau in preparation for some really yummy lace. This lace edging, y'all, look how gorgeous, right? It's so pretty, so yummy, so perfect for the holidays. Now, before we figure out how to jump that break in the bridge, let's switch gears to the sleeves, shall we? I'm applying the same idea to the sleeves entredeau and then that yummy lace. One thing I'm doing with this lace, I'm starting my stitches at the sleeve fabric. Remember, I've got this red thread in my machine. So I'm gonna stitch the lace together by hand, you know, using white thread. Details. <laughs> And speaking of the details, to finish up those lace edges, I decided to take some organdy and kind of make a little cap, if you will. Folding over the raw edges, pressing them in place, and using this little bit of a cap over the raw edges of lace. I gotta say, I really like how it's coming out. Not trying to toot my own horn or anything, but it's nice when things work out the way you thought they would in your mind. It doesn't always happen that way, clearly, if you we saw at the beginning of this whole endeavor <laughs> and something else I had brewing in my mind I'm thinking that some little pleats in the sleeve cap would be so sweet so I'm playing around with that idea and hoping that that works out swell so the last step before jumping across our broken bridge these collars I'm using the collars from another Trudy Horn pattern and I'm taking the bodice from that pattern too so I can steal the neckline off that pattern since, well, that's the neckline that matches the collar, right? Makes sense. I mean, I hope so. I hope I'm headed in a good direction. Once I trace out one side of the neckline, I just fold it in half and I trace out the other side of the neckline. So with the neckline cut out, now the collars have a place to go. 
So I'm tracing the little outline of the collar onto some regular computer paper since the collars are going to be made out of organdy and I want to maintain the shape as much as possible. Every Christmas, baby, reindeer's coming out to play. Santa Claus is packing the presents, making sure you've been behaving okay. Every Christmas, honey, yeah. the snowman's dusting off his hat. Putting on the show for everybody To give them a smile that lasts another year There's something that happens for sleigh There's a ring in the December ends When the children are singing, yeah it's Merry Christmas, baby Merry Christmas, baby. The snow is laying two feet deep. Now wish upon a falling star so all your secret dreams can come true. There's something that happens when sleigh bells are ringing in December is when the chill. There's something that happens when something's that happens when December ends when December ends yeah oh it's Merry Christmas baby Merry Christmas baby Merry Christmas Merry Christmas it's Merry Christmas baby yeah Merry Christmas, baby.